you look at the passenger's window is the uh, the Anna Green Gables Museum and the big barn and that's where uh, Lucy Maud used to write some of her stories and that big barn there when we were kids The Living Archive project is a heritage project. It's a wonderful project. We're getting the students to go out and create an online interactive textbook. Well, we're making an e-text. And it is the students actually selecting artifacts to describe for the electronic textbook that fit into and at the same time recreate 19th century Prince Edward Island. I'm doing my e-texts on a hockey championship team men's fashion, baseball gloves, um, storekeepers and clerks, household goods, porcelain dolls, their eyes can actually fall out of their heads, a cash register when it was back then. Each class has its own theme for their particular collaborative part of the textbook and each student chooses his or her own direction. One group actually chose ice boats. In 1885 um, someone died because he fell, he was pushing the boat across the ice and he fell through the ice and he died. Another chose 19th century bicycles, bicycles from the 1890s. Another one, surprisingly, a group of two students actually chose the Montague hearse and that was the first photograph they chose. It fascinated them and so they ended up doing funeral customs. So the students did research on the artifacts that they chose. We went to a few different places. We went to the Artifactory in Charlottetown. We went to Orwell Corner. The Archives. And UPEI. It's a lot more expensive now than it was. But here's a body protector that they have, and that's five dollars. Those will go there for twenty-five or thirty dollars. And they then wrote a blog about it. You take a picture and put it onto a website, and then you type in different things that is in the picture about your topic. There's this online website where the kids have written blog posts. There's a 3D virtual world where the kids have put their pictures and created a living textbook on the website, on livingarchives.ca. This one shows different fabrics and the different cost. I like this one. Yeah. The guys are working pretty hard, but I'd say the girls are in front. Working on my fifth or sixth blog. Yeah. Well, I'm working on my second. <laughs> They work a lot harder, like if you look at the size of our um, lines, like uh, how big our write-ups are and how big theirs are. Yeah, so I'd say the girls are doing better than us. What have you got there so far? Well, I got, well, what's your name? Okay, that's a good one. Yeah, well, okay, you know yeah. that one. <laughs> what was life like when you were a kid? Well, it was much different than it is today. Uh, number one, we had no electricity. Uh, I think that having 12 year olds writing history for 12 year olds can be very compelling. This textbook written by grade 7 and 8 students is going to be there for, for students next year, five years from now, to look at and learn from in ways that are probably perhaps more real and relevant to them than something that's written by me at, at a different writing level. It's a research project, it's a writing project, it's a it's a community project in the sense of all the people who are getting together to help on it. Do you have any horses? When I was when I was your age, a horse was everything. You, you, you used a horse. What was your transportation? The Living Archives exemplifies just a fabulous way of essentially teaching students that history is living, that they're actually making it as they're moving through this project, as well as recreating it. Thank you.